Hey everyone, my name is Wedge, and today we've got something special for you. As you may have seen Tuesday, we've gotten our hands on the Dual Decks Anthology set. Yes, it's very shiny and pretty, and none of us are quite over it yet. Now, none of those decks in the set are new. In fact, the point of the set is to be a reprint of the first four Dual Deck sets. While undeniably cool, these decks are pretty old. So now that we've unboxed the set, we're going to take a look at each of the decks in it. We'll go over the strategy of the deck, highlight specific synergies and cards we think are fun, and then go over additions and changes you can make to the decks. After all, the strategies can provide the basis for some sweet casual decks, but they are pre-constructed, which always leaves room for improvement. We're starting with the first set of dual decks ever released, Elves vs. Goblins. The Elves deck of Elves vs. Goblins is a pretty straightforward green aggressive strategy. There is a little bit of ramp in the form of cards like Wood Elves and the classic Lanowar Elves. Elvish Harbinger ramps mana and also searches out a specific elf. Pretty solid given the number of one-ofs in the deck. However, the deck mainly focuses on swarming the enemy with tons of smaller elves rather than ramping into huge threats. To that end, you have a pair of Imperius Perfect as Lords. You also have Gem Palm Strider, which you can cycle to pump all your elves. Lissalana Huntmaster gives you an extra elf whenever you cast an elf. You even have an Elvish Promenade, which gives you one elf token for each elf you control. It's also a tribal elf spell, so it triggers the Huntmaster. While the deck mostly goes wide with a pile of smaller creatures, there are a couple that can get big. Heedless One grows based on the number of elves you have. It's pretty solid when all you're really doing is playing elves. Allosaurus Rider can be cast without paying mana if you have the card's Despair and gets bigger based on how much land you have, which makes for a solid late game threat. Voice of the Woods lets you take all your tiny elves and use them to make huge elementals. You also have a couple pump spells like Giant Growth and Wild Size that make one creature a bigger contender. For the late game, Stonewood Invoker gives you something to do with all of your ramp, getting a hefty plus 5 plus 5 boost for an equally hefty 8 mana cost. You'll likely be running low on cards by this point, which is where Harmonize and Slate of Ancestry come in. Harmonize is a straightforward draw spell, actually just a green version of Concentrate. Slate of Ancestry requires you to discard your hand first, but by the time you want to use it, odds are your hand is either empty or full of useless fluff anyway. One fun synergy in this deck is the interaction between Wirewood Symbiote and Lissalana Huntmaster. The Huntmaster gives you a token whenever you cast an elf. The Symbiote, while not an elf itself, lets you return other elves to your hand. Combine that with another elf and you can get a free token every turn if you have nothing better to do or a cheap elf to recast. Unfortunately, the Symbiote can only be activated once each turn, so you can't go infinite. But you're still getting an extra creature without spending a card. If you want to swap in new cards to enhance the deck, an obvious place to start would be additional Elf Lords. You only have two Imperius Perfect, so you can add more. Elvish Archdruid is another plus one plus one Lord that also gives you solid mana acceleration. While not a creature, you can throw in a few Obelisk of Erd. Odds are you'll be casting it for under three mana most of the time. Something else to look into is Overrun and similar effects. If you already have a massive board of elves, giving them all plus 3 plus 3 and trample is an almost guaranteed finisher. If you want repeatable overruns, arguably the best out there is Kamal Fist of Croja. He works especially well with Elvish Archdruid. Tap the Archdruid for a ton of mana and then get multiple activations out of Kamal. The only problem is that Kamal isn't an elf himself, but he's powerful enough in a green weenie deck like this to justify inclusion. Speaking of non-elves bearing the title Fist of Croja, Baru Fist of Croja from Future Sight isn't a bad idea either. He's a little cheaper than Kamal and gives you a mini overrun whenever you play a forest. Not quite as good, but certainly serviceable if you happen to have one or two lying around. Really, the sky is the limit here. Elves are one of the most supported tribes in the history of magic. Like the elves deck, the goblins deck is an aggressive strategy that focuses on swarming the board with a ton of small creatures. The difference is this. Where the Elves deck requires a bit of setup to get out mana ramp and lords and start making tokens, the goblins come out swinging. Open with a raging goblin and hit your opponent before they can even react. Goblin Cohort requires you to cast a creature in order to attack, but half your deck is creature, so that's not a problem. Getting a 2-2 for 1 mana is well worth it. Mog War Marshal gives you 2 extra 1-1s even if you don't pay the echo cost, or if you throw them out to a block before the echo cost comes up. Speaking of blocks, Ib half heart Goblin Tactician makes your goblins blow up at blockers for 4 damage instead of the 1 or 2 they normally do. 
Naturally, you want to close out the game as quickly as possible. However, if the game goes long, you're not without options. Click Slither can come down in the late game and sacrifice your small, now irrelevant goblins to deal some extra damage. Siege Gang Commander is another sacrificial option, allowing you to convert goblins into damage directly. If you wind up flooding out on mana, Flame Wave Invoker gives you a repeatable Lava Axe for 8 mana. It's nothing stellar, but not a terrible deal. You may have noticed a common theme among a few of those options, sacrificing goblins. The deck's all about sacrifice effects and death triggers. You have many sacrifice outlets, most of which don't require mana to use. Beyond what we've already mentioned, Goblin Slutter can turn goblins into power boost to eat a blocker or get in for extra damage. Not only does Skirk Prospector not cost mana to activate, tossing goblins to him actually gives you mana. While Tar Pitcher can only activate once a turn, it otherwise does what Siege Gang Commander does without costing mana. Use Bogard Shenanigans and Skirk Drill Sergeant to get extra mileage out of your goblins and timely demise. Mock Fanatic and Ember Wild Augur can sacrifice themselves to deal damage, while Mud Button Torch Runner deals damage when it dies by any means. There is some strong damage heavy synergies possible here. Sacrifice a bunch of goblins to Skirk Prospector for mana, get damage triggers from shenanigans, and then use the mana to fuel Flame Wave Invoker. You can tap all your goblins to power out a Skirk Fire Marshal activation, killing your other goblins, and triggering shenanigans for even more damage. You can do some pretty ridiculous stuff here. Like elves, goblins are one of, if not the most supported creature type in all of Magic. If you're looking to upgrade the deck, you have no shortage of options. Goblin Chieftain pumps all your goblins and gives them haste. He goes great with a bunch of smaller goblins. Goblin Soothsayer is a 2-in-1. He acts as a sacrifice outlet and pumps all your red creatures, which should be all your creatures. Goblin Grenade lets you sack a goblin and deals an irresponsible 5 damage for only 1 red mana. Arms Dealer has a repeatable effect that's almost as good, letting you sack goblins for 2 mana to deal 4 damage. If you're looking for a more mana efficient solution, Goblin Bombardment lets you sack creatures for free, though you only get 1 damage out of the deal. Also like with the elf deck, Obelisk of Erd is solid here, especially if you want to take the deck in a less sacrificial direction. And that concludes our look at the decks of elves versus goblins. What do you think about the first dual decks ever? There's some sweet cards in here. Between this elf deck and the Fraley's Commander 2014 deck, you can make some sick elf strategies. Let me know what you think. Come back tomorrow when we take a look at the first Planeswalker dual decks released, Jace vs. Chandra. As always, subscribe for the latest and most reliable Magic the Gathering information you could ever need. This is the Mana Source, I'm Wedge. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.